Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 106. Floor 106 will have you facing off against Lulika, whose core passive is Spirit's Guidance. Essentially, bad things happen to you if at any point you don't have at least two buffs on any of the characters on your team. If you attack Lulika with less than two buffs, she does a huge AoE defense break on your entire team and can end the run. If for whatever reason a character ends their turn and they don't have at least two buffs on them, you lose five souls. Additionally, if you ever inflict three or more debuffs to Lulika, then she cleanses all of them and gets an extra turn. She also has this passive here, Rekos' Oracle. Essentially, it increases the attack and speed of her and all of her allies throughout the fight. And at the beginning of each of her turns, she's going to get immunity for one turn. And whenever someone's turn starts, then she gets to steal all of the buffs from your team that she already has. So she's going to have immunity, which means that if you have immunity and no way to actually strip it off of her, she's going to make sure that you can't have immunity. And that's devastating because her moves defense break your entire team. So we're going to need some way to actually remove buffs off of her. So that, that way she can't just start taking our buffs from our team. Because immunity is pretty important, I feel like, to this fight. And counts as one of the two buffs that we need to keep up at all times. Now, when her health is 50% or less, she activates Rekos' Blessing, right? It will revive all of the Night Seeds that you have fought throughout the fight, right? These are her accompanying ads, and we will be killing them before we get her under 50% because they dispel buffs from us. Which is really bad, because again, we have to keep two buffs on us at all times or bad things happen. Now, like I said here, Rekos' Blessing revives all the downed allies, which is a bummer. But we need to keep the buffs in order to have the souls. Because once we get her under 50% health, then one of the Night Seeds turns into Rahel of the Dark. And that's when things get very, very difficult. Lulika herself does not have a lot of HP. Once we get her under 50%, it's essentially defense break her and rush her down because no matter how good we think we're doing, we will not be able to maintain two buffs. We will not be able to main souls for a very long time. So it's imperative that during that 50% or less window, we are ready to go. Our cooldowns are up. Our buffs are ready and we're high on souls and we just rush her down. All right, now that you have a basic overview of the fight, let's talk about who we're playing and why. Starting with our tank, which is Brieg. Brieg is built basically the exact same way that he was for Abyss 105, right? If you played that. Having at least 20% effectiveness is really good on him because his S3, Limitless Sword Arts, gets 50% uh, effectiveness here. Or as I like to call it, Unlimited Blade Works. Because, well, obviously these are all just synonyms for Unlimited Blade Works. Additionally, he will remove immunity or any other buffs that Lulika has stolen with her passive from her. And decrease our defense, which increases our damage, and slows her so she will get less turns. So this skill right here is core to our strategy, and since Brieg is free for everyone, I highly recommend using him. Now, the other reason we're choosing Brieg over somebody like Roz is Spirit's Lord Protection. Barrier is a buff for all allies, so that's one buff. And then also he gets Perception, which is undispellable, meaning Lulika cannot steal it, the sprites cannot dispel it. Therefore, he will always have at least one buff in the chamber. So if for some reason his barrier gets chewed through or dispelled, as long as one other ally can give him a buff, we are good to go. As for how he's built, Arius here as our artifact. Speed on the boots, health percentage on the ring, health percentage on the necklace. If you get some critical hit chance on him, that would be great too because it'll help increase your damage overall. Next up is Tamarin. You already know the deal. Plus 7 on Song of the Forest, plus 1 on Shining Star. Wanderer's Potion Vial is the artifact. Boots are speed, health percentage on the ring, health percentage on the necklace. Just overall, the best uh, healer pretty much in Abyss. Like, you're going to be using her probably for from here until the end. All the way till the end of this series. So, just get, uh, get used to seeing her. Expect her to look very similar uh, to this most of the time. If you can get over 60% effective, so you have a chance to strip Lulika on a non-miss when she's in idle mode, that's going to be great. Now, as for why we're playing Tamarin, idle mode is one buff, surprisingly. So, And it's undispellable, so all the same stuff as Breeg applies here. And then, obviously, you could use the idle mode of her S2, which gives attack buff to your entire team. So Tamarin should 
never not have at least two buffs on her as long as idle mode is active. And if idle mode is not active, you shouldn't be attacking Lulica anyway and triggering that kind of AoE counter. As for our main damage dealer, Vivian is pretty much the go-to here. She's green versus a floor full of blues. That's obviously going to be very good. And her S3 and mana amplification gives attack buff to the whole team, greater attack buff to herself, and immunity to the entire team. If you can essentially use mana amplification and then strip immunity off of Lulica, you're in a pretty good spot because then the sprites can't really hit you with debuffs because you have immunity. Lulica can't steal it because you got rid of her immunity, right? And then you're going to be doing big damage. So that's why Vivian is the play. She's pretty much the best free-to-play option alongside of Bree in terms of generating damage in this fight and maintaining a large amount of buffs. Daydream Joker here is going to be our artifact. Boots are speed, attack percentage on the ring, and critical hit damage here on the necklace. Now, the last slot here can be anything you want. I've used Commander Lorena. If you want to play Commander Lorena, that's fine. Um, it just know that it's a little bit inconsistent. But whatever DPS you want to play here, as long as it's not like Sermia, like Fire Sermia, because you're bringing a red unit into blue units, so you have the mischance and things like that. As long as it's not a red unit, you can play whatever you want. I have decided to go with Furious, and that's for one simple reason. Morale boost gives increased critical hit chance to the entire team, which is a semi-rare buff. It is a buff that he could give very, very quickly, very frequently to the entire team, and it is one that, again, not many characters have access to. So now we have a pretty good spread of buffs. What do you think of? We have Barrier, we have Idol, we have Perception, we have crit chance, we have immunity, we have attack buff, we have greater attack buff. That is a pretty big spread, right? If you don't want to use Furious, you could use whatever you want. Just go here and just start looking at the various different buffs that are in the kit. Uh, as a aside here, I want to highlight, if you have Magical Scholar Doris as a character that you have leveled, she is a fantastic replacement for Tamarin or just somebody you could play alongside of Tamarin, right? So you could play essentially a two healer comp and stay alive that way and just burst things down. I just really want to highlight this character because she has a relatively short cooldown S2 here that gives continuous healing and increased defense. She also has combat readiness push and dispel in her S3. So this is a really good character to play on this floor and somebody I really wanted to highlight. But again, in the flex spot here, Furious, just again because of the fact that he has a semi-rare buff. Daydream Joker here, right, on our artifact. Speed on the boots, effectiveness here on the ring, but if you could afford attack percentage, that would be great. Crit damage on the actual necklace. As for stats, at least 50% critical hit chance, at least 60% effectiveness, and then everything else into speed and attack and critical hit damage if you could get it. All right, cool. Now that we understand how the team works, let's jump into it in real time. All right, so for this floor, we're going to just try to kill the adds because they're really annoying. Do note, though, that if you use a AoE attack here, I think it is right here. Yeah, the dimensional army. Whenever you use an AoE attack, it essentially supercharges the ultimate of the boss and all the adds here. So you just want to try to avoid that if at all possible. When you get Mera under 40%, they get a unique... Rampage buff, which says whenever you land a critical hit, there's a 25% chance that they just cut in front of everybody, take an extra turn. But it only lasts five turns, so it's not that big of a deal. Considering how long this first floor takes, I'm just going to speed up the footage here. Grant me power, Lord Noyas. I have no mercy to spare for your reckless greed. Okay, so now we're on Lulica. So we're going to barrier up here with Bree. And now that we have two here, we can actually attack Lulica. We can idle mode. This will give a buff to the other characters on our team. Mm -hmm. 
evident. So we can soul burn here. Blood will flow like a river. All right, we can attack one of these sprites, I guess. Doesn't have an actual cooldowns. All right, so you see he took uh, immunity here with Lulica. We're blinded, but we can still go after Lulica here. Same thing here. I can go after Lulica because you can see it's going to pull Vivian, right? We could go get our immunity here. Kind of deal with the blind from the mobs in a second. Now we have two buffs here. Let's go hit one of these, because I do want to start getting some of these sprites low. I want to be able to kill them, so if they're going to ulti me. Your suffering is self-inflicted. Are you confident? All right, we can skill two because we have two buffs. This is my stage. Push up with Tamarin. Why should I spare you? All right, now Furious doesn't have a great move here, so let's Arky. Since we're at full souls. Are you finished fighting out of respect? I'll use all my might. I have zero. All right, this is gonna go into Luka no matter what. So. I have no mercy to spare. Hopefully, we get a slow here and a defense break. For your reckless greed. Can't you handle this? Now, if I go S1 and I actually hit and we push under 50%, we're gonna have to deal with these sprites being revived. They're already pretty high up here on the alt cooldown. I'd like to try to kill them if I can, this, uh, this cycle. Are Let's try here. And the arrogance of a fool. Give your all. Get our buffs. Blood will Get a defense like break a here. Get a soul burn here. And that's going to spawn everybody, but they won't come back with the ultimate up. The so Rahel, actually, fortunately for us, Rahel was this one. But now it's pretty much just rush the boss down. Now, she's going to have idle mode next turn anyway, so I'm going to use Arky here because we're going to get to a point where my souls are slowly going to get drained. So we want to just rush Lulika as, fa as fast as we possibly can. So let's hit here. Same thing, we're going to Arky here. And then we're just going to have, since Vivian has three buffs here, let's just go here. You can see a lot of our buffs are getting drained right now. So we go idle mode. Alright, we obviously have more than two buffs here on Brig, so let's go after Lulika. Because at this point, we just kill her dead. Then we have Vivian go for the skill one here. And there you go. Abyss floor 106 in a nutshell. When you get Lulika under 50% there, like we did a lot of burst damage. We got a pretty lucky Thunder God's Cry there, the S2 off of Vivian. Your experience may not be the same. It might not line up exactly the same. Just know that once you get Lulika under 50% health, it's go time. Don't focus on anything else. Just try to kill her as fast as possible. That's why I didn't use Arky or any of my souls throughout most of that first stage of the fight that I sped up. You saw I came into the floor with full souls. You want to have at least 60 souls when you take Lulika under 50%. So that way on those you know, impactful or I should say not so impactful turns like Furious where my option is Arky or just go for a you know, kind of like a piddly little S1. That's where I want to be using my Arky, right? I had a turn where everyone was full health with Tamarin. She was one turn away from idle. It's like, okay, well, I can S1 for like 500 damage or I could just Arky here. Those are the kinds of spots, the winners you want to be looking for. All right. If you have any more questions, as always, let me know down in the comments below and post your other clear teams so that other players can see down in the comment section. I don't want it to be just 
only free to play options like I'm using them. So that way everybody can relate to my videos. But if you have a specific strategy you think is easier than mine, they use a specific five stars. Let people know down in the comments below. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 107. Later now.